What's up, you guys? It's your brother Trey. Um, so I saw a video by Reset Relationships. You guys go subscribe to him, man. He has some excellent conversations and topics that he um, like details and talks about. And once again, man, these are some things that only experience and only like being in the world and going through certain things and you know of age you know you are able to really talk about i love the way he's articulate and he's also funny with it um he made a video about buying a house and uh if ladies should do it and if guys should do it and he took it from the approach of a relationship and so for me the the position i want to take it from is if it really makes sense we got we're hearing all of these these things of people saying oh it's not a good time to buy oh is no 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 now I, 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 of course, this is unpopular opinions, you guys. I absolutely want to take this from a different perspective. Here is my personal opinion on this. And the reason why I feel like my opinion has any merit, any weight, is because I spent two years, 2020 to 2022, as a loan officer. I had to get my uh, NMLS, NMLS license. I studied for it, and I was actually talking to customers. I actually wrote up interest rates I actually negotiated I actually ran credit I actually ran it through the automated underwriting systems with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac I actually did these things you know I was actually in the loan business I saw as the interest rates were fucking absolutely low 1% less than 1% and then I saw them as they were they rose and the reason why I'm no longer working there is because they rose too high and they only kept the best of the best loan officers and I was a young loan officer at the time so they let me go uh, we actually got bought out. The company got bought out, and they they had a massive let let, uh, let goes layoffs, and pretty much everyone got fired. To be quite honest with you about that, I'm I'm actually I'm still in contact with some people that were doing really good, and they got laid off. But anyways, regardless of the point, regardless of that fact, I learned a lot. I was actually in the business. I made a hundred thousand dollars with that company, and I'm also in right now. Um, fast forward in today, I'm halfway through my courses of becoming a real estate agent. Now, prior to me. Even before I became a loan officer, there was a time where I was still in my mom's house and I was stressed and pressed from cash. Didn't know what to do, you know. And so I found something called wholesaling, right? And so I I, I learned so much about that. I'm just telling you the story real quick. Let me give you the basis of it and let me tell you why. Because I'm trying to give you the basis and the foundation as to why I'm going to tell you what I'm about to tell you real quick. And so I, I studied so much, and then after I you know, got laid off with the company, I also got my real estate license as well. And I was also learning so much more about the, the wholesaling and, and just so many different options that you have. And so the reason why so many people, and I, I, I do, I want to say the black community, and dare I even say the Hispanic community, the reason why I don't want to touch too much on the Hispanic community as much is because the Hispanic community is actually very, very big. And I, quite honestly, the black, I, I'm mixed, right? My, my father is Hispanic, my, my mother is, is black. I was raised mostly with my black side of the family. I don't know anything. I wasn't accepted from the Hispanic side of my family. I, I mean, they accepted me, but I, the Hispanic culture doesn't accept me like that. And so... I can speak from the, the the position of saying that most black people just the, like pretty much the entire community kind of thinks the same. There's there I say maybe five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent, either whatever percentage you want to agree on. Most of everyone thinks the same. And as of right now, the it's, come on you guys, what 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 did uh, Warren Buffett said? He said when your shoe shiner starts giving you stock advice. That means it's time to pull out. That means it's time to move on to something else, you guys. And so th what Warren Buffett said, and, and once again, like if for anyone that's taking this into context, I'm not saying that uh, Reset Relationships does not know what he's talking about. On the contrary, he's actually very educated. He's actually very smart. And he brought up excellent points in the video, which is why you guys should really go watch it. Um, what I'm trying to say is that, and the reason why I use it as an example is because it what it means is once specialized education comes down to everyone everybody that should be that shouldn't be knowing this type of education is spewing advice and stuff like that that means that either those methods are outdated or it's time to go somewhere else you guys um i'll, I'll be honest with you super quick back in 2020 you know i was still trying to go through some things 2019 2020 um i you know scamming was big and i didn't do any scamming but i educated myself you know i went on the dark net dark web i learned everything you know learned about cubes i learned about you know if you know what if you know you know you know what i'm saying i learned about all this stuff and 
I was I even paid a little bit of money to get the software and to get the the methods and stuff like that, you guys. And the thing about it is that it's it's all outdated. Those those things are done. If people are like you really think that people are going to start telling you how to, you know, crack cards and shit like that? Some will, but it's going to be a huge high pay barrier of entry for it. You know what I mean? Like you're going to have to pay and there's people scamming too, even if you're paying for it. What I'm trying to say is that those methods are pretty much outdated. The real ways to truly make money either with, I mean, I'm not going to talk about scamming, but with real estate or just anything else in general, you guys, those are going to come from the markets that are the people that are genuinely still making money with it or, you know, uh, otherwise, right? It's not going to be mainstream advice. Even those big people like Minority Mindset or Graham Stephan, they're not even giving you guys the real knowledge on how to truly make money with it. They're just giving you general ambiguous shit that you can read off of a blog somewhere, right? And the reason why I say that is because I found like several YouTube channels, if you do enough research on here, that they're talking about legitimate ways to make money. And guess how many subscribers they got? 2,000, 1,000, if, if 1,000. And the reason why is because these are like older people. These are real old people. They're not big. They're not into this internet shit. They're making money off of making money. You know what I'm saying? Like, And uh, long story short, you guys, I'm, I'm just trying to tell you that there's it's it's so much bigger than what you're hearing. If your friend is telling you and they don't, if they're a fucking server, they're they're a fucking gym trainer or some shit, and they're telling you stock advice or real estate advice, it's more than likely outdated and more than likely not. You shouldn't follow it. You know what I'm saying? Um, back to the original video, you guys. I had to edit. I had to edit this out here so I could you know clean clean up some stuff. Now I'm not successful in it currently because I'm not in it. Right, right. I was in it last year, a couple years ago. Right. And I'm trying to get back into it, except I'm trying to take it from a different perspective. I don't want to be a loan officer anymore. And so I'm saying all that to say four minutes to 30 minutes into the video that I personally, personally, personally want to ask you, why do you even want to buy a property? Reset Relationships brought it from a perfect example. If you're a perfect perspective, if you're a woman and you're just trying to get a house just to flex, fucking anyone, if you're just trying to get a house just to flex, it's fucking stupid absolutely stupid even if you got a lots of cash stupid the reason why it's stupid is because houses are not necessarily assets they're actually they're actually liabilities they're actually and i read this from the rich that poor dad if you you know open up some books you guys would read this and the, and robert kiyosaki gave it a perfect example as to why houses are liabilities it's because they're always first off you're more than likely going to get into the property with a 30-year loan most people get 30-year loans, right? It's the cheapest way to, you know, to pay the mortgage and stuff like that, as well as own the property, own the property. Not to mention, you're going to pay some type of mortgage insurance, some, some type of house insurance. And contrary to belief, you guys, that is not, that's not optional. You have to get insurance. The insurance on the property does not go towards the principal or the interest of the loan. It's just extra cash that you're putting out. And, and here's the deal. You, when people, you think of insurance, house insurance, insurance in general, you're like, okay, insurance is in case I get, in case I get, like, I damage my eyes, in case I, I break my leg or something. Yeah, insurance is going to help cover me. Oh, if I break my, but you know, I get into a car wreck. Oh, insurance is going to cover that. Home insurance insures the bank, not you. Not you. It insures the bank. You also have to get liability. It's, you, you've also got to get homeowner's insurance as well, Right? Homeowner's insurance insuring the property, and then you've got to pay insurance to the bank, whoever lent you the money. When you get an FHA loan, you're it's it's mandatory that you have homeowner's insurance until you pay 20% of the LTV of, of LTV. So it's best if you're going to get a loan to get a conventional loan, whereas if you, where you put 20% down so that you don't have to pay homeowner uh, uh, private mortgage insurance or just mortgage insurance, you guys, because it's just cash going into the, the bank's pocket and it's not helping you out either, either way, right? And so that's one reason why houses are a liability. The second reason why people always think about, oh, I'm gonna rent on the property. Oh, it's gonna make so much money. Oh, you... first off, you gotta do a lot of math. You gotta understand what the economic rent rate is going for. And then how much more are you gonna do it for? Are you gonna do 200, $300 over the, 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 the market rate? You gotta think about these things because people or if they're trying to rent a house, they're going to be looking at what the average market rate is for uh, renting a house as well. And if you're going too above, 
then I, you know what? You're not gonna, you're gonna have a tough time getting tenants. And the reason why I'm mentioning going above it's because you want to make a profit. If that AC unit goes out, that's $1,500, 1500 dollars out your pocket, out your pocket. And so, how much is that? That's damn near a year's worth of rent that you just have collected from that tenant. If the AC unit broke down, now you gotta just spend that out. My mother actually rents a house right now, and you know what she, you know what happens when something breaks down? It's the homeowner. He comes in and fixes it himself. He used to be a plumber. He used to do construction, stuff like that. So he fixes it himself. So it cuts that bottom line of having to pay someone else to come in and fix things, right? So unless you're like that, you've got to, unless you have that that skill set, that knowledge, you want to take the time to learn how to do all home repairs yourself, it's going to cost a lot of money just to repair things. You don't, I mean, I mean, of course you can do your due diligence, you can get background checks on your tenant, you can get a credit check on the tenant that the person that you're trying to get into the property, but if something goes wrong, and the, the biggest thing you got to worry about is you got to take care of it. It's coming out of your pocket, right? So that's another reason why you shouldn't rent the property, right? And so I'm saying reasons why you shouldn't buy them. You you might be thinking about it like why you shouldn't buy it. No, this is things that you need to think about before you buy a property. Now, the reasons why you should buy a property is because if you if you you should buy a property if it's in a good neighborhood, a good spot, a great location. If you have market knowledge, if particularly if you have access to the MLS. I, that's the reason why I'm getting my real estate license because Texas is a non-disclosure state. The MLS, unless you have a friend or something like that, that's when you can leverage that. But I don't, I don't have any friends that have access to the MLS that will just let me look at the MLS and look at any kind of data that I want. You know what I mean? And not to mention, even if I did, I want to learn the education about the real estate market and about all these things myself. It's like cheating on an exam. It's like cheating on a test in school. Yeah, you're getting the answers right here, but when it comes to an actual test, are you going? You're not going to be able to pass you're not gonna be able to pass because you just copied all the answers for someone else you know what i mean you can't always have someone there to hold your hand going through real estate deals and stuff like that so back to the buying a property you need to make sure the the market area is good how how often are houses being bought do you is there is there a good population of cash buyers in that area you should learn about wholesaling real estate right wholesale real estate that's what you should think about i would buy a property if, for one, I had, let's say about maybe 20% to put down on the property, 20, and the reason why is because FHA loans are so much harder to, to, to liquidate than a conventional loan is. FHA loans are with the government. Federal, federal there's, there's lots of things that go with it, you guys. It's just so much harder to get rid of a house when you have a federal loan against it. You can still do it, but the margins are looking terrible. And if you're going to get an FHA loan on a property, you might as well just not really buy the property at all. Once again, kind of going back to what Reset Relationship said, you guys, is if you're just trying to get the house just to flex, no point in doing it. That's it's a stupid mistake. If you think you're going to rent it out, I mean, good luck. You can try to do that, but you know, you're more than likely going to fail with that. Property taxes are going to raise damn near every year. They never go down. They almost always go upwards. And here's this: there's this myth about the, the real estate market possibly going to crash. That was supposed to happen several months ago. That was supposed to happen in like 2021, you guys, 2022. It's, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't really think it's, it's, you know, I think it's so hopeful people are wanting to do this. But like, like, let's just be real. Do you think the people that are in houses right now, massive amounts of people are just going to lose the house, the property and stuff like that? I mean, if prices of house, if, if prices of goods and everything continues to go upwards, maybe. But a lot of these people that have these houses, they've been in these houses for years, They've been in this house since probably like 2008, earlier than that. At least the properties that I was refinancing, these were 40, 50, 60 year old people that had cash. They had hundred, two hundred thousand dollar jobs. You know what I mean? It's like people that are owning homes these days. I know you're seeing all the glitz and glamour of, of people, you know, YouTubers and celebrities buying cash. The average homeowner is not that. The average homeowner is a very stable kind of person you guys like and this is something that like you got to understand i'm going into the park the market if i were to purchase a property it would be only because i have an exit strategy i would not be in the house any longer than one year or two years i'm, I'm absolutely looking at a house i'm going to buy it simply to sell it maybe fix and flip or something like that 
that's the only reason you should really buy a house. It's, it's to fix and flip to make some money off of it. I'm not talking about rent. You could do rent, but if I were to go that route, I would more do ho uh, wholesale. Or uh, I would either do wholesale or I'll do subject to. I buy a nice property to subject to it. And now what a subject to is I would give the I would buy the house so I have the note, right? I'm paying a thousand dollars a month on this note for 30 years, right? And so what I would do is I would find someone else that wants to buy a house, that wants to be a homeowner, kind of like some of you, you guys out there, and I'll be like, hey, check it out. Look, I got this house right here. It's pretty good, right? Um, I you know, it, it's for sale. I have the note, right? So I'll let you 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 can have the option to buy this. Um, and I know you don't have three hundred thousand dollars to just give to me. So how about I make you a loan, right? I'll give you a loan for thirty years, twenty years, however long you want to. You pay me fifteen hundred dollars uh, a month, and by the time you're done with this loan, I'll give you the house free and clear. But here's the situation: you still own the house. Like I'm not gonna just step onto your property. You since you bought the note, since you have the note now, we we made a deal. You're paying fifteen hundred dollars a month to me. You can have the property. For the mo I still hold the note, so I legally have the I legally have the documents right in court that if you don't finish paying me, I can evict you, get the house back, and I can restart, re re-rinse the entire situation, find another person that wants to get into this. But here's the deal about that is I don't have to worry about if the house, if the AC unit breaks down, if the washer, whatever, whatever, that's your problem because you're trying to buy the property. You're paying off all this money to buy the property. I've become the bank. That's why you should buy a property. So you can become the bank. You should get a property in a nice neighborhood and find someone that wants to buy it. If they don't have the cash, right, then you write up your own loan. That's why you should buy a property. Don't buy a property for your family. Don't buy a property for your house or anything like that. You should do that later down the road. You should, we're in the age of multiple starter homes, you guys. I, me personally, I, I don't, I think I'll have to buy 10 houses before I, actually buy the house that I want to pay off. There's nothing wrong with the mindset that you guys are thinking of. It's just that it's so far. It's so outdated. You guys are thinking about buying properties to pay it off. That's a dub. That's a dub. Those days are long gone, you guys. Long gone. Especially with these prices going on right now. Hopefully the prices will go down a little bit a little bit sooner, but do you really think it's going to go down to an affordable level for people? Hell no. If the house right now is three hundred thousand dollars and it's a hundred thousand and it jumped up a hundred thousand dollars from twenty twenty to now, do you really think that in five years it's gonna go back down a hundred thousand dollars? That house is gonna lose a hundred thousand dollars worth of, of, of value? No. And see, and, and this is the thing that I want people to think about, right? You're wishing on a star for this type of shit to happen. Think about the economy. Think about think about people who are making so much money. They don't want that to happen. So they're going to do as much as they can to make sure that doesn't happen. And come on, let's just be real. It's more than likely not going to happen. You waiting on a star, waiting for the right moment to buy a property may not ever happen. You have got to educate yourself on the real estate market so that you can understand the different methods, the different tools that you have in your belt in order to do something with that. I just gave you one example of things that you can do with, with the property, why you should buy a property, and how it could be a benefit for you. There are multiple reasons. I'm not going to give it all to you unless you guys want it, because um, I've got a huge plan. I've got a big plan, and it, it's 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 fail proof. It's fail proof, you guys. You can do. You can always make money in real estate buying properties, no matter what kind of market it in. Even though it's not in a buyer's market, whatever. Buyer's market, seller market, you can always make money with it. You just got to know the ins and outs. You got to know the game, you guys. And so I just wanted to bring that perspective um, onto that uh, video that he did. It's a really good video. Absolutely check it out, you guys. Um, with that being said, man, it's your brother Trey. So if you made it this far in the video, man, I commend you. I really appreciate it. But the whole, to round it all up, the entire moral, the entire message of this video is how important it is to educate yourself, you guys. It's not enough to listen to a couple of YouTube videos. It's not enough to listen to your friend who's even a real estate agent or anything like that. When I say that I'm becoming a real, that I want to get my real estate license, the first thing that comes to your mind is, oh, you're, you're trying to be a real estate agent. Oh, you're going to show houses. Are you going to? Fuck no. I, I Hell no. I don't want to do that. I hope I never have to show a property. I hope I never have to be anyone's agent. And see, and that's the thing right there. 
what else can I do with my real estate license? If you can't answer that question, then that's something that, that, that means that you need to learn more. You know what I mean? And it's not to put, you know, I'm not trying to make anyone sound, feel like they're less than a dumb or anything. It's just so important to, we've got to start spending more time educating ourselves. You've got to start spending more time. Stop trying to spend so much time pleasuring yourself. And, and this is for men and women buying shit going traveling places and shit like that you can do that there's a time and place for that but we as the black community people of color whatever we are so far behind where we should be we don't have time for that you've got to educate yourself you see these fucking red things on my eyes you guys i'm tired you know why i'm tired because i'm working two full-time jobs sometimes three doing this shit exercising reading books all this shit. You know why? Because when my mom goes to the hospital, some shit like that, God forbid she does knock on wood, I want to make sure that I can give her the best health care she, she can possibly have. I want to make sure I can genuinely get generational wealth to my family members and stop actually fucking talking about it and making it sound like something, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm focusing on generational wealth. Well, how about you? People are just throwing around these 10 cent words thinking that they're actually doing something. And then I want you to get out of the mindset of talking and fucking doing you you can genuinely make the things that you talk about in real life if you put the work in but it's not going to come from listening to a couple people on youtube videos what happens is these videos like this i should spark you, inspiration in you to act but you got to go open the books you got to go do the research and shit like that so that's the whole moral of this video you guys um if you want more of this type of education man just Comment down below real estate, comment down below finance, comment down below loan officer, whatever. And um, I'll I'll definitely make another video on this, you guys. Um, if you want to know why I'm getting my real estate license, type type in the comments down below real estate license. And I'll make another video on that, you guys. Uh, let you guys know about that. Anyways, like, comment, subscribe, subscribe down below, you guys. I'm out, man.